Progress Check 4.2 in Geometry, focusing on angles, triangles and polygons for GCSE Foundation. So we've got question number one, which is saying, write the name of the angle below. So we have this angle, which I try and imagine it to be a beach chair and somebody who is obese is lying in this chair and there is their big tummy so this is similar to obese we call it obtuse this is an obtuse angle the next question is asking to work out the value of angle b so we have this angle that we need to work out we already know that this is 53 now both of them are angles on a straight line and we know that a straight line is 180 degrees so it's half of a full circle so 360 divided by 2 gives us 180 so to work this out all we do is 180 take away 53 so 10 take away 3 is 7 so this is now 7 as well because we borrowed 1 from it 7 take away 5 is 2 127 degrees so b is equal to 127 degrees now we have the diagram shows three vertices of a parallelogram write down the coordinates of the fourth vertex the diagram shows three vertices of a parallelogram write down the coordinates of the fourth vertex the fourth corner so looking at these three dots that we have we can imagine there to be a line between these two dots and another line between them two so if i went across just like here diagonally across these two squares i could create another dot in here so this is going to make a rectangle so this point is minus one comma minus two A rectangle is a parallelogram so this counts but there are other possibilities as well so if I take off these I can now imagine there to be a line between these two dots and these two so basically there is one missing on the left and what we do we go one two one two so two spaces to the left and two up there we go so we have that dot there to make a parallelogram So that is point minus five two comma two. Now there is another option. And first of all, let's connect the other dots. So we imagine now to be another dot on the right so we'll go one two three to the right one two up so one two three one two so that's the other point and that would make another parallelogram so this is point five two five comma two you only need one of these so two coordinates only either this or this or this this question we've got to work out the size of angle a so this one in here we have 70 
and 50. Now we know that the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. If you tend to forget that, you can draw a triangle on a piece of paper, cut it up into three parts and line up all of the angles, the three angles, and they should add up to 180 degrees, creating a straight line. So we have 70 already and 50, which add up to 120. So A is worked out by taking away 120 from 180. So that leaves us with 60. So A is equal to 60 degrees. ABC is a right angle triangle. AB is equal to 50 centimeters. ABC is equal to 24 degrees. Work out the length of BC. ABC is a right angle triangle. As soon as we read or hear that it's a right angle triangle, this means that we have two options either using Pythagoras or Sokatoa. Which one do we use? If the question relates only to the lengths of the triangle, like this one here, where we have length, length, and length, so no angles at all, then we're dealing with Pythagoras. So we need to use Pythagoras. If the question is about angles as well, like this one here, which has 20 degrees, then we're definitely using Sokka Toa. We are talking about right angle triangles only because this is what you're going to be seeing in foundation. Now, looking at the question, we've got AB is equal to 23 centimeters, angle BCA, which is this one, so B, C, A, so that's 20 degrees. Work out the length of A, C. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. It is this length here that we're after. Now, the first thing that we should do is to label the lengths. We know that this longer side is the hypotenuse, so that will be the H. Now, which one is the opposite? Which one is the adjacent? So they all relate to this angle here, which is the 20 degree angle, which is opposite the 90 degree one. It doesn't matter where it is, it could be on the other side, like shown in here. It could be one here as well. And it doesn't really matter. But it's not the 90 degree angle that we're talking about. Now, of course, in our example, it can't be this one, this angle here, because we don't know how many degrees that is or we haven't been asked to work it out. So it's one of the three angles and it's not 90 degrees. Now, as we said earlier, this 20 degree angle was opposite the 90 degree angle. So they are opposite each other. So this one is the one opposite, the side or length opposite the 20 degree angle. Now, what remains is the adjacent side or length, and that is the one that is left. Adjacent means next to, so this is next to the 20 degree angle, 
and it's not the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is the longest side. Now we're going to focus on the lengths or angles that we've been given or we need to work out. So looking at these, for the adjacent side, we haven't got any information in terms of how long it is and we haven't been asked to work it out. So we're not interested in this. For the opposite side, we've got that it is 23 centimeters. So that's important information. So we're going to use that. We also know that we need to work out this length, which is also the hypotenuse. So the two key letters that we have are O and H. So we're going to look at Sokatoa to find the right ratio that we are interested in. So the ratio that has both O and H. And as you can see, that's the so. It's not the ka because ka has a and h and we don't need a. Toa again has a which we're not interested in. So this is the one that we're going to use. How are we going to use that? So so that's the shape that all of these ratios take. So ka would be like this and toa would be like this. So specifically for so we've got sine. So the sine of 20 degrees will create some space here. So sine of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite side which is 23 divided by the hypotenuse which we don't know how long it is and we're going to work out. Now sine of 20 degrees we can use a calculator to work that out. There we have the calculator so we go to the sine button, press it and then Put 20 inside, close the bracket, equals this. So this number now, which I'm going to write as it is, so it's 0 0.3. 20143 it's very important that we don't round at this point is equal to 23 divided by h the hypotenuse so the hypotenuse if you can think of this as a triangle so we get this, so the hypotenuse is equal to 23 divided by 0 0.34201433. So that's what we're going to be doing now. So I'm going to keep this long number that I have, which is equal to the sine of 20 degrees, and I'm going to store it as the answer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 23 by the answer. So 23 divided by the answer and it gives me the hypotenuse. So that is equal to 67.3 That is to one decimal place. 
to recap. Questions about right angle triangles can be done through Sokatoa or Pythagoras. So we have, in the case of Sokatoa, we label the lengths and based on that we pick the right ratio such as so ka or toa and we write the ratio down like this as a fraction we plug in the values so replacing the letters with the values that we know and we work out the values that we don't know using algebra now although this question is not part of the progress check i thought i'd add it so that it can help you understand the difference between Socato and Pythagoras and recap those. So this one is about finding the length of side A because as we said Pythagoras is about lengths only, no angles. So we are given this length which is 12 centimeters, this other one which is 14 centimeters and we've got to work out the hypotenuse. So a squared is equal to 12 squared plus 14 squared because that's what Pythagoras theorem says. This longer length, which we call the hypotenuse, the square of it is equal to the square of the other two lengths added together, the squares of them two added together. So we have now a squared is equal to 12 squared, which is 144, plus 14 squared, which is 196. So a squared is equal to 340. So a itself must be equal to the square root of 340 for which we'll use a calculator to work out. So there is the square root button. The square root of 340 is equal to this. Now we want to have it as a decimal because we'll write the answer to one decimal place. So we'll press this button to turn it to a decimal. So we've got 18.4390 to one decimal place, this is going to be 18.4. So we'll write that as 18.4 centimetres. This is to one decimal place. Now we've got to write down the exact value of sine 60 degrees. Perhaps the easiest way to remember this, the exact values of 0, 30, 45, 60 and 90 degrees would be the hand method. So I'm going to quickly draw a hand. Not perfect. But we get the idea. So if we go sine this way and then cosine the other way. So we'll label these as 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. These are the ones that you'd be asked to know the exact values of and we'll go this way to work out the signs so we've got 60 that's this finger here and we're looking at signs so we're going in this direction now we'll count the fingers that are before it so we go one two three so that would be square root of 3 divided by 2. So divided by 2, that would be the case for all of these as we work them out and square root at the top. So if we want to work out 
the sine of 45, for example, would go, we have one, two fingers in front. So we go square root of two divided by two. So all of them divided by two. If I want to work out the cosine of 30, for example, so that's going in the opposite direction. So this is the finger. We go one, two, three. So square root of three divided by two. This would be divided by two and we'd have square root at the top and the number inside depends on how many fingers in front whichever direction you're going so sine this way and cosine the other way so sine 60 was this option on the diagram name each of the circles properties in the boxes provided in an appropriate place so we're going to have to add the names of the parts of the circle so we've got this red line going through from the center to the circumference. So we call that the radius. Then we have this line in gray, which is the diameter. If you ever get confused between the two, the diameter is the longer word and the diameter is longer than radius as well. So it has a greater length than the radius. We also have in purple the circumference. which is, in other words, the perimeter of the circle. We have here this one, which is called sector. So this is one sector of the circle, a bit like the sectors or departments of a government. Some are smaller, some are bigger. And we also have this line, which is in dark green, which forms a T through to the center of the circle. So if I extend this a bit, it looks like a T. And that's the tangent. So the tangent forms a right angle here and there with the center of the circle. So we've got now in light green, we have the cord. The cord cuts the circle into two parts. And what we call those parts are segments. So this one here, which is in blue, and this other part as well. So the two that are created when the cord cuts the circle. These are called the segments. So this one, part of a regular polygon is shown. Work out the number of sides it has. So we can imagine this polygon having other sides of the same length, but we don't know how many there are in total. And the name of the polygon will depend on the number of sides. So. One thing we know though for all polygons is that the external angles, which is when you create a straight line in here using the internal angle, so this angle outside, so all of these external angles together 
will add up to 360 degrees. If you ever forget that, draw quickly a square or rectangle. And as you can see, the external angles are right 90 degrees. So 90 times 4 is 360. So we know these will add up to 360. Now, how many degrees is one external angle? As we said, this is 180. Take away 140. That leaves us with 40 degrees. So how many 40 degrees would fit into 360? And we can divide 360 by 40 to work that out. We're doing it as a fraction. So 360 divided by 40. We can divide by 10 both of them. So that leaves us with 36 divided by 4, which is 9. So the number of sides that the polygon has is 9. Line PQ is parallel to line RS. Work out the size of angle A. So we have these two parallel lines and a line that cuts through them, the transversal. Now we can look at these as rooms, for example, so or sections, divisions of different places, for example. And we've got this side, which is on the right, and this on the left of the transversal so what we do is we have angles which are on the same side so they correspond so these two are corresponding angles And this is going to be 110 degrees, so same size. This one will correspond with this one, and they would be the same size. So these would be, since there is a straight line in here, it would be 180, take away 110, so that gives us 70. And this would be 70 as well. Now this would be corresponding with this, and this would be corresponding with this. Now we have angles which are vertically opposite each other. So A is vertically opposite this one. So this must be 110 as well. And this is 110 as well because it's vertically opposite this one, but it's also corresponding with the, this one here as well. So all we needed to do for this question was to write corresponding angles and work out the size, which was 110. But I went through some other types of angles in parallel lines, such as vertically opposite. We've got um, corresponding. We've got alternate angles as well. So alternating between different areas. So this one here is alternating with this one. So we have also co-interior. So if we think of these as rooms, we have co-interior angles. So this one here is co-interior with this one. So both of them add up to 180. We have one foot is equal to 30 centimetres. Convert 3.2 feet to centimetres. So this is a ratio question as well. So one foot is equal to 30 centimetres. We need to convert 3.2 feet to centimetres. So to get from one foot to 3.2 feet we've multiplied by 3.2 so we must do the same on the other side because this is direct proportion 
So 30 times 3.2 is equal to 96. 96 centimeters. We have centimeters on one side and feet on the other. Is the answer 96 centimeters? Now we have one gallon is equal to 4.5 liters. So again, one gallon is equal to 4.5 liters. How many gallons are there in 15 liters? So to get from 4.5 liters to 15, we've multiplied by a number. And what is that number? We can work it out by dividing 15 by 4.5. So 15 divided by 4.5 gives us 3.5. 3 recurring. So we keep that number in the calculator and we just multiply it by 1 so that gives us the same number. So this would be 3.3 .3 recurring gallons. So we can say 3.3 .3 gallons to one dp, one decimal place.